how might that uh, affect the issue of taking too much uh, carbidopa levodopa going forward and, you know, eventually, uh, I, I'm, I'm told by some people that it eventually can reverse itself and make things worse for you. Well, we, we're always, uh, as we've heard in, in the earlier modules, we're always sensitive about using too much medication. And there's uh, obviously the concern about uh, levodopa causing fluctuations and involuntary movements. And these newer formulations that, that deliver the drug in a smoother way may turn out to, to translate into a more even long-term course and minimize the, the, the fear of complications. And that's certainly something that we're going to be experimenting and, tr and testing. How well understood is this by the general medical community, or family physicians, for example? Well, right now it's not. Uh, as we've talked about before. These are therapies that will become available to, uh, to everybody, but I think it'll be the thought leaders and the movement disorder specialists that will understand their use early on. Uh, but they will be available uh, once they're approved by the FDA, they're available to, to any physician. So that's one area, this area of drug development, which we're very excited about. The other area that we're particularly enthusiastic about is, is really do, will we ever be able to impact the underlying mechanism of Parkinson's so that we really can stop uh, or slow its progression? And that's really been the holy grail of, of therapeutics for Parkinson's these many years. And for 25 or 30 years, I've been involved in, in, in trials of interventions that look so good in the laboratory in terms of stopping progression or impacting the underlying mechanism that don't pan out in, in clinical trials. Now, whether that's because the medication's not effective or whether it's because we're not looking at the right endpoint is not clear. What is clear is that we need to diagnose Parkinson's earlier. Now, you can imagine going to your doctor and having a blood pressure checked uh, or having a prostate antigen checked. All of these tests are designed to pick up a, a disorder early and intervene before it becomes symptomatic. And we now know that Parkinson's is uh, due to an accumulation of, of a protein called synuclein. And as it accumulates, it begins to interfere with nerve function. And if there were a way of, of making that diagnosis earlier, uh, of having perhaps an imaging technique that would label that protein so we could see it developing long before it happens, and we're getting close. Uh, we have uh, a scan that can sort of pick up dopamine deficiency now. So we're getting closer and closer to being able to detect Parkinson's earlier then maybe we can intervene at that time. And by intervening earlier, we have a much better chance of impacting the long-term course of, of Parkinson's. For example, there's now a trial of an immune therapy, you know, a therapy that goes in and uses your own body to fight the abnormal protein, to clear it, to eliminate it. And those trials are now in development. So we're getting closer and closer to therapies that will actually impact the long-term history of Parkinson's. So between what's happening at that phase of illness and what we're developing to treat existing symptoms, uh, I think it's a, it's a time to be very optimistic about what's happening in, in the field and our ultimate ability to really, really reduce the impact of, of Parkinson's on patients.